Welcome to a very special opportunity to taste five generations of winemaking, 40-year-old Cabernet vines. Welcome to Tudal Winery. Well, Rudy, great to meet you. Heard Likewise. a lot of great things. Thanks for having us out to Tadal. Tell me a little bit about uh, this estate, how you came to be here, and, and why you are still here, and what's magical about it. Absolutely. Well, to do that, we definitely need to have some of it in our glass to get started. Only appropriate. Absolutely. Um, yes, Tudal Winery. Uh, I have a, a really fun history with Tudal in that when I first came here from uh, after college at UC Davis, cheers. Cheers. Um, I worked for a small company called the Oakville Grocery. Okay. And this was back in the early 90s. And one of the highlights of their, uh, of their lineup of Cabernets was Tudal, mostly for its history. It started in back in the, in the, the early 70s. Yeah, five generations. And, of, right. It's amazing. And it was, uh, you know, one of those that you mentioned as the, the heart and soul of Cabernet in Napa. And we sold a lot of it and I enjoyed drinking it and um, still do. Mm -hmm. um, and when there was an opportunity to come here and consult and uh, work with the, the, the vineyards that are here, it just seemed surreal to me. Um, the vines that made the, 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 the wine that I was selling at Oakville Grocery are still here, the original plantings, and being able to continue that tradition and follow this legacy of now 40, almost 50 years is fantastic and it's, it's nerve-wracking every year. I would also. imagine it's a little bit nail-biting from that type of legacy you're trying to carry on. And you went to UC Davis, came up to Napa. Was it always the intent to make great wine or legendary wine? Um, my original intent was to grow incredible grapes. Okay. And um, once I started working in vineyards with some, some very well-known vineyard managers, I realized that growing great grapes and handing them over to somebody else to make something from them was not even like half. Like giving, half. Your, giving your children yeah, away exactly, type of thing. Exactly. <laughs> I wanted to see it all the way through to the very end. Mm. And see what kind of product that that hard work and, and farming and what Mother Nature brought us would actually produce in a bottle, and um, create different styles and and make sure that the vintages were all seen in the in every bottle and consistencies were there, but there was some flow of all those vintages being hot, cold, wet, dry, all those, having all of that present in the bottle seemed like such a more in-depth and exciting challenge. And it seems that with the age of the vines here, it's almost Bordeaux-like, because I think the average age of the vines in Bordeaux is about 36 years of age. And that's very not New Worldish. Usually they kind of tear them out after a certain period sure. from an economic standpoint. But here, they're, they're producing wines and have for years. Is that something that you, you embrace and you get to the great joy from continuing on? Um, you know, it's hard to find vines that old around here. Right. Um, for those same reasons, also marketing. Marketing dictates when we kind of change varietals and, and follow what trends are going on. Um, but certainly there is an old world feel to these vines. Mm -hmm. um, the fact that they are in, have been in the ground for 40 years, the roots are very deep. They're getting through layers of soil and bringing up little fissures of flavor that are unlike anything new. And it's an um, old riverbed? Or? Uh, yeah, it's an old riverbed, and the river has come, has changed so many times through here, even row to row. There are gravelly rows and there are clay rows, and oh, wow. then they change over and over again. So we get a lot of, of diversity in flavors and, and character. Um, but that said, this is still California. I mean, part of why Bordeaux is the way it is, is its climate. Right. And so if we try and chase Bordeaux character and flavors, we're going up the wrong way. And they're they're all very subtle. This is not this ginormous, bold, in-your-face Cabernet. It's a little bit more classic in its style. And that comes from winemaking between Ron and myself. That's fantastic. Uh, it is to 
appreciate what we get every year, be a little bit more hands off um, and let those vintages show themselves all the way through. And, and try not to get in the way. Right. Pretty much. Can't let it go down the wrong path. We can keep it going where it needs to go, uh, but allow it to become what it should become every year. Well, certainly with the pedigree that the winery has enjoyed for five plus decades, we it looks like you're onto something. Not a, not a fluke. So congratulations well, thank on you that. very much. Cheers. Cheers. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Really an exceptional time today with Rudy. You really have to come out to Tadal Winery. The family, the history, the vines, the Cabernet, it's everything is something to behold. Thanks so much for all your support.